Hello and welcome to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. I am your co-host Sarah. I am joined, of course, by Tate. We have a great show for you today. We will be covering Game 3 between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Game 3 between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Uh, we'll be talking about if the NCAA, NCAA settlement can save March Madness. And then we'll be moving into celebrity news with a conversation with Demi Moore about vulnerability and doing nude scenes at 61. And then we'll be talking about Nicki Minaj's dramatic arrest in the Netherlands over the weekend. So stick around for segment five. As always, I would like to remind you to like and follow the this, this show. Um, that really does help us. Also, if you would like a comment or a question read on air, you may do so by going to gsmcsports.net. Um, we get a lot of questions and comments during the show. Uh, going to GSMC sport, gsmcpodcast.net and leaving a tip or a donation allows that comment to be seen by us. It puts it at the top of our list. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Good morning, <laughs> Tate. How are you? All right. It's, it's Monday. It is Monday. And... This show has a tradition of having technical difficulties on Mondays. We don't, we don't, so. we don't talk about these things. <laughs> yeah. We do not talk about technical yes. difficulties. Uh, how was your weekend? Weekend was great. Just had a nice walk today and uh, watched a lot of sports. A lot of sports this weekend. Well, then you are in the right place because we, you, you, you have a place you can talk about sports. <laughs> would, would, would you like to do that? Which is nice. No, what about you? How, how are you doing this morning? Um, Doing okay. Had a not so, I had a, a dramatic run in with a dog, except it wasn't dramatic. It was the cutest little puppy, but he would not leave. And I was worried about him because he was off leash. He didn't have a collar he well i knew where he belonged but he wouldn't stay there so. <laughs> it was it was it was a lot of drama to start the morning with with puppy drama excellent that's how, now that sounds like a band puppy drama, <laughs> puppy drama. <laughs> what kind of music would puppy drama play oh no that's that's a rock group that's that's like that's a heavy metal group heavy puppy, metal. puppy drama that's that's strictly heavy metal right? okay so just saying okay all right sounds good um all right so we're going to talk about game three between the dallas mavericks and the minnesota timberwolves let me just go ahead and get set up really quickly and we will it's still, it's still your, your, you know, you finish your first week on the show. Now you're, now you're a, a seasoned veteran. Got to be rolling, rolling smooth now. It still takes me, you know, those, those couple <laughs> of seconds to actually click the buttons. So there's, yes. uh, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but the Minnesota Timberwolves face a grim outlook in the Western Conference Finals after losing game three to the Dallas Mavericks, 116 to 107, following behind 3-0 in the series. Despite strong individual efforts from Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, the Timberwolves have struggled with poor shooting, combining for a mere 33% from the field across the three games. Game three saw the Timberwolves falter in the clutch, failing to execute down the stretch as the Mavericks closed out with a 12-1 run. Dallas's dynamic duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving has proven too formidable for Minnesota. Doncic posted a, his third consecutive 30-point game, tallying 33 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists. Irving, reviving his career in Dallas, added 33 points, including 14 in the decisive fourth quarter. Their, their performance marked a historic achievement, becoming the first backcourt pair in 50 years to each score at least 30 points in three playoff games. The Timberwolves, who appeared strong in the semifinals against Denver, seem overwhelmed by the Mavericks' playoff experience and the star power of Doncic and Irving. Rookie Derek Lively II's absence due to a strained neck suffered in the second quarter has further hampered the Timberwolves. Likely an all-rookie honoree has been, has been perfect from the field in the conference finals and his loss was keenly felt. 
for the 3-0 deficit. History is not on Minnesota's side as no NBA team has ever overcome such a deficit in 154 attempts. The Mavericks will look to complete the sweep in Game 4 with a potential NBA Finals showdown against the Boston Celtics on the horizon as Boston leads 3-0 in their Eastern Conference Finals against Indiana. Spoiler alert for Segment 2. <laughs> All right, so Tate, thoughts on the game? It was, it was, it was, it was really close. And then those last three minutes. You, matter of fact, we were watching. We were kind of watching the game as we were getting ready, and you're like, "Oh, it's a lot closer than I was expect- expecting." And then you look around again. You're like, "Oh." It's like I took, never mind. It's like I took. I don't even know. It's it's like I just sort of spaced out for a minute, and then I look up at the score and went, "Oh dear, yeah." Now and see, this it's it's just weird watching this game. First off, they were talking about how you're talking about you have the first backcourt in fifty years to both have thirty points, and man, it's just been. Like it's it's weird saying that Minnesota are not capable of competing with uh, with Dallas on on you know defensively. Minnesota, who has been just praised all year about their defense, and it seemed like they were at a disappa- a dis- you know disadvantage. Might I even say? You know, it was kind of like their defense was a liability. It just feels like to me, as I as I watch this game, there's no real. I, I just don't see any adjustments that's going to stop Luca and Kyrie. Um, when you when you go and you look at at Luca and Kyrie, and you're saying, give me one second, she's had. Sarah's having some difficulties here. Uh, just click on my talking points there. Okay. There we go. Yeah. My apologies. There was <laughs> a she's, button that needed to be clicked. She's having difficulties here, but like Luca, there's no answer for Luca. I mean, they haven't been able to slow Luca down. Thirty-three points. Uh, you know, seven rebounds, five assists. It is. They don't have an answer. Then you look at Kyrie as well, and you're you're saying you look around at Kyrie and 33 points with him, and you look at this and they're like defensively, I don't think that there has been from game one to game three, there's been no defensive adjustment. Um it's like I don't know what it is, how how you can look around and just say the defensive player of the year is a liability on defense just seems impossible to say. Kyrie has just been, I mean, Kyrie and Luka has just been too much. And I think what what Dallas has been doing that has been quite amazing on Rudy Gobert, which is forcing Rudy out further and further and further, where Rudy is more of a defensive stopper by forcing him out. He's on an island. And then you can, he looks uncomfortable out there trying to match up with Luca when it's in, 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 with the spacing. And the minute they get spacing, Luca can Luca's nailing huge shots one after the next one. And I just haven't seen any adjustments. Also, defensively, I feel like the better defensive team has been the Mavericks. The Mavericks have been the one that has been causing all kind of problems for Anthony Edwards, uh, you know, and Carter Anthony Towns throughout this series. And Yes, they had a better performance this game, but there's there's a gap there, and I I don't I don't understand it when I look around and I watch these guys. I watch Minnesota against Denver, and they in handling Denver, but then but cannot figure out how to even make an adjustment to Dallas is just shocking to me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I look at this series 
and it is a, a three games to zero type situation. And I already feel like this series is over. This series is absolutely over. I don't really see a comeback for, you know, and when I say over, I'm looking at this series, it's going to be a sweep. The only thing that can be done is can Minnesota muster up a game? That's all it comes. That's what it comes down to. Is it going to be a, a true sweep, four games to none, or is this going to be a series where this last game can Anthony Gay, Edwards and and Carl Anthony Towns put it together to you know to muster up one game? And I don't see it, Sarah. I don't see a way that Minnesota can turn this around. So. It has to be an odd place to be in because the, the stats are not on your side. 150, it, it, the, when I was reading, in 154 times, no one <laughs> has ever come back from 3-0 to zero to win a series. I mean, you have to be perfect, right? You have to win four games in a row. Yeah. Exactly. And no, it's that, not. Mentally, that has to be a really hard place to be in because part of you has that, there might be that tiny glimmer of hope. Yeah, we could do it. And then another part of you is like, statistically odds are not in our favor not only that though i kind of feel like you're there and you're like okay we got to get we got to get a game and so a lot of times i think the reason why that statistic is such a huge gap is i think a lot of teams have this or players have this mentality where we have our pride we got to get a game we have to get a game but then when they get a game then it's kind of like really like okay we didn't get swept and ten, that's why the gentleman sweep is one of the more common things that happens is you're looking around and you're saying okay how do we get a win but on the other side a lot of times and this is the reason why i'm thinking i'm thinking about a sweep is a team will come out and when they're down three games and none they go all out First quarter, second quarter, they go all out. Inevitably, in the NBA, the, the opponent always goes on a run. I got a little choked up there. <laughs> Woo. Let me get. Let me take another drink here. But the team goes on a run. When that run happens, a lot of times a team can get demoralized and be like, okay. Uh, we, you know, this is, it's inevitable. We're going to get swept and then they lose. I haven't seen anything that shows me that Minnesota can put together four solid quarters to put together winning football. They can put together competitive football, but putting together on offense and defense. Are we talking about football or base basketball? What do you mean? Are we talking about basketball? What did, what did you say that? You said football twice. I said football? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. And then Mid basketball. I started saying baseball. <laughs> no, we know what we're it is Monday. Today. I meant basketball. That was a total slip up. But that's why I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that's what I want. No, I can't see Minnesota putting together uh, four quarters to actually close and, and win a series, win a game against uh, against Dallas right now. This is, to me, it's over. Uh, it's just a matter of will it be a regular four game sweep or a gentleman sweep, but we can definitely, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Now, the question is, the dangerous thing I look at is, Let's say they go through and they sweep them. The NBA Finals don't start to June 6th. That's a long layoff. That's the question right there is that long layoff. What's going to happen? Because I'm already looking forward to seeing Luka and Kyrie in the finals against the other team from the East, let's just say. But it's possible that the, the Celtics Pacers series could be over soon as well they both might have long, I, long breaks that could that will be interesting to see yeah it has been it's been an interesting uh 
finals. I mean, Eastern and Western Conference finals. I, I, I was expecting when, when the finals was, when it was decided who was going to be in the finals, I was expecting both of these series were going to be seven game series. And it's been anything but that. Uh, now, I mean, quite honestly, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at sweeps on both sides. If you want, if you if I if I was if you were putting my feet to the fire and you said you had to give an answer, I'm saying sweep on both sides. All right. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Boston and Indiana when we come back. In the meantime, you are watching the G the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. <laughs> 